GPS. And now for the exciting conclusion of GPS, Chapter Thirty Four. Okay, so now what? It's time to get up and fight. When you finally make the decision to fight for your life, an internal feeling of joy and pride will blossom within your essence, and you will be full of enthusiasm as you look forward to this new stage of your life. You understand and expect that it may be a little difficult to get used to, you know, the new standards you set for yourself, and to fight in order to start to utilize self-control. But since you're doing the right thing, you probably expect the process to be a sweet and exhilarating experience. Boy, are you in for a big surprise! Here's some tips on what to expect and what to look out for. Number one, a bittersweet experience. A person can become physically sick and encounter a strange phenomenon. Sweet things will taste bitter, and bitter things will taste sweet. At this point, even if you would bring him the sweetest food in the world, it will taste bitter to him, and he will have no pleasure from it. And on the contrary, he will enjoy and appreciate bitter, disgusting food much more. In the very same way, after being separated from holiness and purity for so long, you may have become spiritually ill, and the side effect may be that the wonderful, beautiful, delicious sweetness of the correct way of life may actually taste bitter in the beginning. The Torah says, "Vayavayu Marasa," and they came to a place called Mara. But they could not drink the waters of Mara. Why? Kimarimheim, because they were bitter. Meaning, because the water was bitter. But the Medrash says, Amar Ablevi, why is it really called Mara? Kimarimheim, Hadar Hayumar Bemaisov. The problem was not the water. It was the people, as the Nesiva Shalom says, <speaking in Hebrew> You know why they couldn't drink the water over there? Kimarim <speaking in> Haim. <Hebrew> they were bitter. At this point in their journey in the Midbar, the Yidden had not studied Torah for three consecutive days, and after not being in touch with spirituality for just three days, when they finally encountered water, water refers to Torah, it tasted bitter to them. But not because something was wrong with the water. Nothing was wrong with the Torah. Rather, Kimarim Haim, they, the people, became bitter. Once they were bitter, they could not taste the sweetness of the water which is referring to Tyra. How true this concept is. Some people go into the base Medrash and they see people for hours, they can learn and they're in Ganeidin and they're enjoying themselves and they would, they would give up everything for that. Somebody who hasn't done it can come in and find himself very bored and not understanding, not feeling, not being able to attach himself because he strayed so far away. The beautiful, sweet Tyra, the learning, the davening, to him, it tastes bitter. But it doesn't mean that the beautiful things that are sweet are really bitter. It just means that this person needs to be healed. The same applies to all of us. Since you have been disconnected for so long to whatever spiritual level is above where you currently are at, even when you try to reconnect, Tyra and Mitzvah on that level, on that higher level, will not taste so delicious to you. But keep in mind, there is nothing wrong with the Tyra. Torah is sweeter than honey to those who are immersed in it. It is you who has strayed from the proper path, and it is you who has a spiritual sickness that causes your taste buds to become twisted. There's a story that somebody came to the Labavitcher Rebbe's Chus Yogan Olenu. He was an old man, an old Jew, and he told him, I'm Christian now. The Rebbe looked him in the eye and he said, You're sick. You need to get help. He looked at the Rebbe, I'm sick? I love it. I don't feel sick at all. And the Rebbe replied, and that means you're even more sick. You're so sick that you don't even know you're sick. But please don't be discouraged. As you continue to go more and more, you become more and more healthy. 
Slowly but surely, those old things that you were doing, those old habits and materialistic, animalistic pleasures that you used to do, those are the things that will start to taste bitter to you. As you become healthy and the beautiful Tyra life will taste sweeter to you than anything else in the world. Number two, up and running. The Nesiva Shalom says, as you begin to fight to get closer to Hashem, brand new challenges, obstacles, and problems will arise before you to the point that you will feel that it is not realistic for you to achieve your goal. And you will start wondering, why did I sign up for this life challenge? Why did I buy this GPS thing? Why is Hashem making this so hard for me? Let's bring an example to prove the point. Growing Pains Jonathan started to learn karate. In the beginning, he was the weakest kid in the class and everyone was able to beat him up. But after a whole year of working really hard, Jonathan became the top kid in the class. There was no one in the entire white belt class who could win a fight against the great, mighty Jonathan. Then, the teacher graduated him into the yellow belt class. Jonathan entered the class with such confidence and with a smirk on his face, knowing that the day before, he was the toughest, strongest kid in the class. But when he entered the ring to fight, to his great surprise, he lost to every single kid in the class. How could this be? Just one day before, he was on top of the world, and everyone in his class feared him. And now, he was suddenly thrown to the bottom of the class, and he couldn't win anyone? Jonathan begged his teacher to please let him go back to the white belt class so that he can remain undefeated. But the teacher wouldn't hear of it. Jonathan thought, why did I sign up for this? Why did I decide to push myself? If I wouldn't have been so great and beat everyone in the class, I never would have been promoted. I never would be in this situation. But yet, he didn't quit. He worked harder and harder and harder. He got knocked down. He fell down. He was hurting, but he got up again. And he just did not quit. And after a whole year of hard work, Jonathan climbed his way to the top of the class. Every time he entered the ring against another kid in the class, he overpowered them. He was stronger, faster, and smarter than anyone in the Yellow Belt class. He felt on top of the world. Until... His teacher graduated him into the green belt class, and once again, he was hopeless and defenseless. Imagine that someone decides to change his life around and lose weight or build muscle. He feels so great putting on his new shiny sneakers and signing up to the gym. He looks around at all the people leaving the gym. They're all smiling. No one is fetching or complaining. What a great life. I'm going to be just like them. He thinks that since he made the right life choice to improve his situation, that from now on, things are going to be easy for him. How much fun it will be. I'll go every day to the gym. I'll work out. I'll lose weight. I'll feel good. I'll look good. But we know that that is just not the case. On the contrary, now that he signed up to improve his life, he's just beginning the difficult and sometimes even painful journey. He gets greeted at the gym by his new personal trainer, a big, burly guy, pushing him past his current limits because the only way to grow is through challenge. Until now, he ran away from physical hardship and difficulty, and so his body will not be able to tolerate any little strain at all. He has no endurance. He has no staying power, and so he feels that this is impossible for him. His experience will be full of Oy, I can't do this. Why did I sign up for this? This is terrible. I give up. However, everyone else at the gym will be smiling as they watch the new kid look so lost as he struggles through his new challenges. Although the new guy is going nuts and feels like storming out of there never to come back again, everyone else smirks, remembering, hey, that's exactly what I looked like when I first came. And they know that as long as this new guy just doesn't give up, One day, he'll build himself up and he'll become like they are now. Let's bring an example to prove the point. Blowing his brains out. For his afikoman, little Shia asked his parents to buy him a trumpet and get him private lessons. He was so excited with his new shiny trumpet and he could hardly wait for his first lesson. However, when his parents picked him up from the lesson, they were shocked. 
Little Shia wanted to put the trumpet under the car and have them run it over. He looked terrible. His lips were all puffy, purple, and deformed. And he was pale from trying to blow this metal thing and not getting anywhere after a whole hour. In the very same way, as you enter the army of Hashem and you want to fight for your life and you decide to take this big step to reform your life and sign up for greatness, you will be greeted by new challenges that you have never before experienced and you will feel like you just can't possibly win. You may experience feelings of frustration like, what was I thinking? Did I really think I could change my life? Things were so much easier for me before I tried to improve myself. Where is Hashem? Why is He making things harder for me? Didn't I finally make the right decision? The Nesiv Shalom says, Ein davar shi ein love. What you need to remember is, this is a fight for your entire future, and it's not going to be easy. However, you need to know and trust in your internal strength. As long as you don't give up, you will win. There is nothing that you cannot conquer with your patience and commitment. Over time, you will get stronger, quicker, smarter, and you will be able to conquer your new challenges on your new level. And eventually, after feeling comfortable with your new level, you're even going to start to feel the urge to grow even higher, to go to the next level. And then once again, your courageous decision to grow closer to Hashem will be greeted with new smashing blows by a Yetzirah that has been in that class forever. He's stronger, quicker, and smarter than you. And he will try to make you regret your decision to get into the ring with him. You will start to feel, what on earth am I doing here? Ow, this hurts. Let me go back down to the previous level. This is too hard. It's not worth it. I can't do it. But with time and commitment and patience, you will learn to overpower those challenges as well. And then you'll be ready to move even higher and higher. Yes, you can and you will with Hashem's help. Now your focus must be to stay on track. You know what is right. And don't let anything or anyone talk you off your goal. So we already learned two very important things. First of all, the bittersweet is the fact that you're going to be feeling that things aren't as sweet as you expected. The second thing was up and running. You expect to go to the next level and win and conquer, but no, it doesn't work that way. You got to build yourself up until you can get comfortable on that level. And then every time you go to a higher level, just like the kid in the karate class, it gets harder and harder. But I'm sorry to tell you, aside from those two things, there is actually a third reason that things will be difficult for you. The Kliyakar teaches us that the darkest part of the night is just before daybreak. And this reveals a phenomenon that Hashem instilled into everything that He created. Whenever something senses a threat to its existence, it gathers all of its strength to fight against that force. So too, The Yetzirah senses that it is about to lose a valued customer on the level that you were on. He doesn't want you to go to a higher level. And therefore, as you try to improve your life and raise yourself higher and higher, expect it. Expect the Yetzirah to throw anything it can at you right now to distract you and knock you off your goal. It's not just that he's going to fight you to become better. All of a sudden, different things in your life that our distractions are going to pop up so you can't stay focused and calm on your goal. He's going to do everything he can to get you to quit. And when that happens, now that you're trained and expecting it, you should smile, a calm and knowing smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was expecting that. Now you know that it knows that you are for real. You know that the Yetzirah is scared. Change must be around the corner. If you just hang on and don't give up, the sun will soon rise and push away all of the darkness in your life. Let's talk about what happens. When you decide to change, you're going to have a problem. And that is that you're going to have a void in your life. When you stop doing the things that bring you down, your life will feel empty. You're missing those things. In order to grow, you need to fill the void in your life with good thoughts and good acts. 
if you always have something that you do to kill time, if now you decide that I'm not going to do that anymore and you're just going to sit with your hands on your lap and be bored, you're never going to be able to grow. Eventually, you'll crack. You need to replace the non-action or the bad action with good actions that you enjoy and that are fulfilling for you to reach your goal. Just like, imagine someone wants to lose weight and every night for two hours he watches TV and eats popcorn and potato chips and pretzels. If he decides to go on a diet and lose weight because he has to, he's fighting for his life. But then at that same minute of that same hour of that same night, every single night, he sits down on the couch, but does not turn on the TV, does not take the popcorn and the potato chips, and he just sits there bored for two hours, there's no chance that he'll make it. He needs to find something else. He needs to get a jogging partner. He needs to get something else to do in that time to fulfill that need in order not to fall back. Let's bring an example to prove the point. Filling the void. Tommy went to the dentist with a cavity. First, the dentist cleaned out the dirt. Then he drilled out the rotten part of the tooth and made a nice clean hole. Can he just leave it like that? Of course not. He must now fill up that space with a new strong material that will prevent future tooth decay. We find the same concept in the Torah. Hashem told the Jews that conquering the land of Israel would be a slow process that would take several years. The question is, why didn't Hashem make all the nations in the land run out of Israel all at once? Let them conquer it from one day to the next. And the explanation is brought down. If all the nations would have abandoned the entire land in one shot, then the small Jewish nation would not have been able to inhabit such a large area. And then in the interim, wild animals would have inhabited the vacant land, and then it would have been very difficult for us to take back the land from the animals. And that's why Hashem gave us a gift. Not only did He give us Eretz Yisrael to conquer, but He gave it to us piece by piece, step by step, so that way we could conquer an area occupy it, and then move on to the next portion of the land. As you break away from your corrupt way of life, you will need to fill the void with positive and productive things. For if you don't replace all negative activities and thoughts with positive ones, you will surely relapse into your old ways. If you went to the movies every Saturday night, you can't just stop and sit on your couch from now on, staring at the four walls and twiddling your thumbs. Instead, you must turn your Saturday night into a Matzah Shabbos and go to Rabbi Reisman's enjoyable Navi Shir. You need entertainment, stimulation, activities, outlets, so you can't deprive yourself of them. Just like someone who stops eating non-kosher must then eat kosher food, he can't just starve himself, so too you must replace all of your treif activities with kosher activities. You just can't starve yourself. And the Nesiva Shalom says, sur meira al The way to truly uproot the nekudas hara, the ground zero of evil buried deep inside your subconscious, is by actively pursuing a righteous lifestyle and immersing yourself in the service of Hashem. And as you immerse yourself in the good life, you will begin to connect to Hashem, and then your inner pull towards sin will become weaker and weaker. Give up a good shear with good friends and good food to go back and do what I used to do? Doesn't feel right. And as the balance of good over evil shifts in your mind, your priorities and focus will also shift so that sin and corruption will have less of an appeal to you. Over the sands of time, even the idea of sin will begin to disgust you. And you will start to wonder, who would be silly enough to give up the feelings of pride that I have in myself from being connected to Hashem for such insignificant things? If you think about the tzaddikim and the gedolim, they also can think about the tithes and the things that we do wrong. But they look at it like, what are you kidding me? Why would I give up my level of closeness to Hashem for that? And listen to the words of the Nesiva Shalom. Lord, 
לב יהודי, וכן איבריו נעשים איברים יהודיים, שהרי כל הדבק לטהר טהר, על ידי שיהודי מסתבק בהשם, נויצר אצלו עם מציאוס חדושו, עד שנפח להיות יהודי בכל מהוסי. As you live a life connected to Hashem, and you grow higher and higher, your corrupt mind will transform into a Yiddish mind. Your perverted feelings will transform into Yiddish feelings, and your entire being will eventually become transformed entirely to be a complete Yid from head to toe. The Megillah says that Mardachai HaTzadik was Ish Yehudi, He was a, a person, a Jew, a Jewish person. And the Mepharshim explained he was a Yehudi b'chal ishi Yusai. He was a Jew through and through. His mind was a Jewish mind. His heart was a Jewish heart. His longings, his desires all became transformed to a Yid through and through. Our parting words to you. As we already wrote, the Holy Zayar taught us that everything in the visible, physical world is created to show us what is really going on in the invisible spiritual world. And that is why Hashem created the concept of gravity. That is a constant pull toward the earth. This represents to us the constant pull that we each have toward earthly physical pleasures. However... The world finally recently discovered that once you break out of the Earth's atmosphere, what happens? There is no gravity. It's gone. And everything in that atmosphere just naturally floats upward. This is certainly meant to teach us an amazing insight. Once we somehow break out of the grip of our earthly surroundings, once we break out of that atmosphere that's pulling us down, we will naturally float upward, and grow closer to Hashem. As the Klilas Yoifi said so beautifully, Hadover ha-yochid she-tomet oile l'mayla, k'neged ha-koyach shel arzi is she-moishich kol dover gashmi l'mata, hu ha-ner, v'ha-ner remez l'nishama, k'dichsiv ner Hashem nishmas adam. What is the one thing on earth that defies gravity? A flame. A flame always flickers upward. Even if you turn a candle upside down, the flame goes up. Our holy soul is compared to a candle, which is always flickering upward, fighting the constant pull of gravity, even while immersed in this upside-down world. Regardless of whatever level of spirituality you are on right now, you have a battle to wage to go higher. to move from the level that you're on, to move out of your comfort zone, to raise yourself up, to conquer and push out the evil that has inhabited parts of your life and rise to the next level. Now that you've programmed your GPS, you are ready to start your journey. Buckle up and stay strong until you reach your final destination. And you'll go high